How you doing in this whole uh, lockdown thing? Well, uh, you know, uh, I'm a writer, you know, so for the writer, rock, lockdown, no lockdown, it's the same life, you know, you just sit in a room and you look out the window. So uh, that's what I've been doing, uh, you know, I'm very happy to be home and uh, this is the, this is the place where I grew up and this is the longest I've stayed here in 21 years with my mother. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, it's, it's really perfect here, you know, because, you know, there's a great, it's a great space for writers to write, a uh, lot of animals sauntering in and around. And, uh, you know, it's an old Assam style house. I don't know if you're aware of Assam style house. These are these bungalows the British built, uh, a British design when they came, when they were, you know, in Assam. Uh, the only thing I miss here, my wife and kid, they're stuck in Delhi. But uh, oh, thanks oh. to technology, I'm, I'm video calling them every day, so, you know. I'm so sorry. That's awful. Uh, glad you're glad you're keeping up with your spirits, though. The uh, as as a writer, I'm sure you're just getting a lot done. It does it does being in isolation basically help, or is it a hindrance as a writer? Or? Uh, yeah, I've been getting so many calls to uh, do projects now, you know, which I would never got in the pre-COVID world, because you know all these studios are paying salaries to the executives, and they need to justify their salaries. So they're calling <laughs> all the writers and. They listen, we need to develop content, you know. So I'm like, yeah, so I'm swamped with work actually, you know, Dang. which is a good thing, you know. Good. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, every silver lining, you know. So for the so the writers are really kinda happy with, with the lockdown situation. Yeah. And uh how your film, which uh, I think you saw our review, but we think it's such a brilliant film. Uh so uh, hats off to you for a million different reasons. Uh that, that film was so 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 oh, good. Right. Um, how how has your life changed, or has it since uh, that film came out? Well, uh, you know, uh, you know, not to, when I used to pitch uh, film ideas, you know, earlier, people would just think I'm nuts, you know. But uh, <laughs> what, you know, because these concepts they don't work. You know how I used to work in Bombay, you know, in the, in the cinema industry, there, in Bollywood, so to speak, and you know, I I was finding no takers for my ideas, you know, so. I decided to go independent and things started happening. So I get taken a little bit more seriously these days. That's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, even not like I'm rolling in money, but uh, at least, you know, people listen to you now, you know. And for a writer, I think that's more important than money. There's somebody yeah. to listen to, you know. Absolutely. Sure. Ab absolutely. Yeah, and that, that was, you mentioned something that we were going to ask you. So you basically created a love story that centers around cannibalism. Did you, what was it like having to pitch that? <laughs> <laughs> Well, because you know the idea was never to pitch it as a film about cannibalism. The that right. trope uh, being a cannibal, uh, you know, was a very provocative trope. So, and uh, you know, I wanted uh, you know to provoke people a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, with, uh, I think the second part of the film is mostly about addiction and how you people deal with it, yeah. and how people manipulate who love them to you know get their fix. Mm -hmm. So it could have been, you know drugs or it could have been alcohol, but because I wanted a very provocative trope, I used uh, cannibalism. You know. Yeah. yeah. And that was that was brilliant uh, to because it was like I think I said in the review said it's it's almost cannibalism is almost a secondary part of the film. It's mostly mm -hmm. a love story and, and about addiction, like you said, and the fact that cannibalism is almost like I mean, it's it's the crazy part of the film, but it's almost like a side story of what what is actually going on in the film, which is a testament to your to your brilliance. But this was actually the first uh, Assam film that we'd ever seen. And I feel even in India, um, this has been a lot of people's first film from Assam. Um, and because when we did the review, we wanted people to not watch the review if they hadn't seen it, because obviously you want people to see this. And a lot of people had told us that they went and tried to find it and then watched it and then came back and saw the review. Um, how do you feel about this being like, do you, does it put any pressure on you that? Your film is a lot of people's first introduction to Assam. Uh, it's uh, uh, I don't know. Again, I guess uh, you know the proper word to use here is humbling. You know, but everybody uses when you know when when people start watching a film. It's it's a uh, also for me. You know, it's it's uh, idea validation. You know, because uh, you know uh, to get validated for your ideas, no matter how weird they are, is always very satisfying. For a filmmaker, writer, you know, 
So uh, and to see people, uh, you know, uh, from, not from Assam, you know, uh, people from Kerala, from you know, Delhi uh, or, or Bengal, you know, just uh, just understanding what this film is about is really, uh, you know, it's very validating experience. You know. Have you seen uh, people outside of uh, India with the same response? Pretty much, yeah. We premiered in Tribeca, so uh, you know, and an American audience, I thought, would not get much of the cultural, you know, context that mm. because. No, touch is such an important part of Western culture, you know. Uh, but you know, it is plausible in India to like somebody for a long time without even having one single, you know, touch. Yeah. So I thought, you know, things might get lost in the in the cultural, uh, you know, uh, context. But but they got it, you know. In the essence, the the whole essence of the film is a love to two people, you know, who, who like each other but cannot do anything about it, and that's pretty much universal, you know. Yeah. So so uh, yeah, it, uh, America was quite good. I didn't travel much after that with the film, uh, but it has been playing in festivals in Europe and Asia and we have been getting great responses and our Twitter feed is full of uh, wonderful feedback from people. That's great. That's great. Yeah, there's so many um, metaphors and allegories within it that transcend even the cultural things that are clearly not only things we could sense and knew for the limited uh, understanding we have for that region of India, but the larger pictures of you know, I thought about this when we were reviewing it, the the if things as simple as you are what you eat and everybody has skeletons in their closet and some of them still have meat on their bones. Uh, the, what was the um, inspiration for the idea? Did you first have the love story and then the idea of them taking pieces of themselves became a part of that? What was the process in writing it? Uh, I think this idea uh, just came to me, you know, over a period of three, four months of through observation, through you know, a little bit of uh, studying. Uh, but like I, I, the idea got triggered when I saw two people eating meat in a food court in a mall, you know, in the pre-COVID mm. world when malls were open and people were visiting food courts. <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, and and it, that you know both of them were so involved, and in, I think they were eating KFC chicken of all things, and you know uh, they were so involved in that meat, they were not even looking at each other. You know. mm. So it was quite. You know, so I don't know. It, maybe it was filed in my subconscious, and then I stumbled across this uh, very strange uh, sexual kink on the internet called voraphilia, uh, which is about you know uh, fantasizing, uh, getting ingested by a lover, and mm. getting that basically. You know, so so there are a lot of these forums uh, where you know where people uh, share artwork or stories, you know, about voraphilia. Uh, so sort of all these things, you know, and then the whole nature of uh, of sin, punishment. Who is it? You know, should we should yes. we hate the if we hate the sinner, because at some level, you know, we are all capable of sinning. Uh, so these kind of things, you know, sort of came together, and I just threw it out at my producer Sham Bora one day, one rainy day, you know, while we were uh, marketing my first film for Thanudi uh, in Assam, and uh, he completely pounced on it, you know, and he said, "Let's do this." So I was like, "Really?" So, <laughs> so you know, that's how it began. That he's glad he did now. Uh, <laughs> the um we first saw the trailer for this a few months ago and it was presented by Anirad Kashyap. Uh, so I was wondering how he um, saw this film and what that relationship was like. So uh, I knew Anurag through common friends and, you know, I had once briefly met him, you know, when he was working on Gangs of Vasepur, you know, in one of the, you know, one of these cafes uh, in Varsova where all these strugglers hang out in Bollywood. Uh, you know, uh, so so I, that was the only uh, sort of interaction that I had with him before this. But he heard about the film and he wanted to see it. You know. So, uh, uh, you know, I went over to his uh, to his home, his flat, and he took me to his den, which is basically wall to wall, uh, filled with DVDs of, you know, all kinds of films. You know, it's like a, I don't know, it's a DVD library of a unique kind of a DVD library. So we saw the film there and, you know, uh, uh, after the screening ended, the first thing he said was was that wow somebody's finally done this in India, you know. Hmm. So uh, I figured, it, you know. So so that's how it began, and he was aware of the film. Then after six seven months, when we were trying to release the film, we were not getting money to release the film, and he came and and, and lent his name to the project. It's not like he funded he, the release, but he lent his name, which was enough to you know for us to attract a small little bit of money we needed to uh, have a theatrical release. So yeah. it, it was great for him to support us. You know. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, there's there's many. I mean, we made a comparison when we, after we watched it um, immediately um, because of the, the prominence of uh, Parasite having won the Oscar this year here in America. And we actually uh, 
in all sincerity, we said this in the review, we loved Parasite. We think Parasite is a wonderful film. We are very happy that it won Best Picture for a lot of reasons. But if someone were to ask me, and I think Corbin feels the same way, of the two films, which of them do you prefer? We actually prefer your film. And I think we're hearing a lot of uh, conversation about you being considered for lack of a better term, the the, the Bong Joon-ho of, of Assam or of India. And how, how does that feel? Do you consider that to be a, a compliment? Do you not want to be compared to anybody? Uh, I've actually, I've, I've not seen Parasite, you know, but I will at some <laughs> point soon. But I love I loved this first film, The Host, you know, because I'm a, yeah. I'm a creature feature guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, 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 I love genre cinema since I was a little boy, I've been watching. So mm-hmm. The Host for me mm-hmm. was a very, very remarkable film. That should have gone to the Oscars, I thought. You know, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, I've also been compared to many people, you know, Christopher Nolan and uh-huh. I don't know, you know, so many names, you know, in Assam. Christopher Nolan of Assam, okay, which is not a big deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like how Mr. Big used to be big in Japan, you know. So, so you know, uh, but uh, it's it's okay. These are just you know, I mean, you're only as good as your as your, as your last film. You know? Yeah. So uh, I I don't just, uh, you know get to me you know because uh, you got to stay desperate you know. Yeah. Uh, only then can... How do you yeah. how do how do you like working on um, small budget uh, films? Um, do you do you like that? Do you like the challenges that it brings? Uh, that it makes you have to be creative. Uh, I'm sure you'd love to have the biggest budget you could, but uh, what, <laughs> how do, what is, how do you like working on the small budgets in, as comparison to having a larger budget? Uh, I haven't really had to work, a chance to work on a big budget film. I hope to have, fingers crossed, next year, uh, I hope to do a, a big budget film, you know, in Bombay. Oh, but cool. uh, what I think uh, is, you know, uh, I, I think uh, the budget, uh, the, the, the strip decides the budget. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, when I'm writing the script, I consider the budget as an important thing. You know, if I yeah. feel that this scene requires three actors uh, in France, then I will try to write the scene like that. Uh, reality hits you when you start budgeting the script and realize that obviously, you know, you cannot, uh, you know, uh, get f- uh, more than uh, you know, say, a crore in funding for your film. So whatever, so you have to then uh, sort of compromise on on the scale of the film because uh, you know it's it's a as Reema Das, another filmmaker from Assam, uh, whose film actually went to the Oscars uh, from India, uh, she has proven that even if even 10, 15 lakh rupees also, you can make a very, very good film, you know. So it's so uh, so so budget is obviously important, but uh, you know what I see most writers do is they you know they abandon ideas because they think that no, I'll never be able to pick, you know uh, get this much money to make this film, you know. But uh, you can you can work, you know, the idea should be grand, you know, because. It doesn't cost any money to think grand. You know, it's only when you're executing it that you need the money that you can compromise a little bit. And uh, and I also uh, I have also learned over the course of two films that you know what you want to say with a large scene with 300 actors can also be said in a small room with one actor also. If you just mm-hmm. apply yourself and think, so so you, you, I guess that means that you tend to become more creative you know, because you got to get uh, you know you try to get more bang for the buck so to speak. Yeah. 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 And in the creative process, um, the last film, obviously, when you were writing this, did you have particular actors in mind, especially for the leads that you were like, oh, this is exactly who I want to have play this? Or did you find them afterwards and you found the match to who you envisioned as you wrote? Uh, that was true for the for the male lead, uh, Orghadi, uh, the guy who played mm-hmm. Sumon's character. Mm-hmm. But uh, the the woman... The, 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 this character, like uh, Lima and me, like you know, we've been talking for a while about doing a film because she's also a dancer. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we were thinking of, you know, she wanted to do a short film on on Assamese dance. Uh, so I, I mean, you know, I thought when the story came to me and I started developing it, I thought maybe you know this will be good to have her because, you know, uh, it, you know, if you look at love stories, uh, they mostly work if you have new faces, new actors you've not seen before, so that mm-hmm. you know. Uh, Easier for audiences to connect with the character than the actor. So in so playing this character, so I thought you know anyway I'm looking for new faces. So let me just try and approach her and see if she'll do this film. I didn't think she'll do it because you know she comes from a you know a conservative classical dance uh, space. She's also a dentist by profession, <laughs> but you know uh, she did, she just loved the idea and and that's how we found her. So in the middle of writing the script, we fixed the female uh, lead. 
That's uh, the mail lead causes a headache, you know. That was just, I think, three weeks before we were supposed to start shooting, we found the guy, uh, you know. And wow. Uh, how, that's how it happened, you know. We, we auditioned a lot of, uh, we saw a lot of boys, you know, to, who would play this role. But there was never any consensus in the crew that this, you know, that uh, this person is correct. If I like someone, the producer would say it won't work. Uh, so finally, with Orgo, uh, you know, when we saw him, everybody was in agreement that yes, we found the guy. So that's how it began, you know. That must have been a huge relief being three weeks away from production. <laughs> uh, it was a huge relief. You know, we didn't know what yeah. to do. We were thinking of the dates of the shoot, you know. But, uh, well, you know, that's how things happen. And yeah. what's, what's your relationship like uh, in terms of directing actors? Um, are, you, are you very hands-on? Do you like a lot of rehearsal? Or do you like to just... Uh, some, like, I, I think Ang Lee, he's very hands-off. He doesn't really interfere a lot. So where do you, where do you fall as a director in, in dealing with actors? Because they can be... Um, uh, uh, touchy sometimes. I actually, you know, when I started making films, I did, uh, when I started doing films, I was not, uh, you know, uh, I, you know, Hitchcock used to say that, you know, actors are nothing but talking props. But, uh, <laughs> you know, so that, uh, after working, in my, in my first film, I worked with two uh, legendary actors from SIM, Adil Hussain and Seema Biswas. So, you know, through the way they practice their craft, I realized it's such an interesting art form, you know. So, uh, and what we did for my first film is we did a 10-day workshop with all the actors uh, where, you know, we went through the motion, not only understanding what acting is and, uh, you know, and so I learned a lot from that first experience, you know, that workshop. Uh, what was happening in Amis is you were getting these two lead actors who had never, ever acted in front of the camera before. Hmm. So, 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 you know, so it was even more important for them to go through a very rigorous workshop, you know, where we uh, not only discussed the characters, that, that came very late in the workshop. Much of the workshop was just about what is acting, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, you know what the, my takeaway at work that you know acting is not about showing uh, what you're feeling, but you just feel it, and then whatever you know is natural, it will come out in your face. So yes. that is my one instruction to both the actors: just don't act, you know, just just feel. <laughs> just feel that, that is the best advice you could ever give an actor: don't act. That's fantastic. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> Um, what I, I don't know if you've experienced this. This is just a random uh, throw-off question. Have you noticed, like I have, that all the white actors in India are usually terrible? Uh, <laughs> and uh, oh. I've asked a few different directors this, and I was wondering if you, you had an opinion as to why that is. Oh, because we just pick up the first white guy we see on the street <laughs> and say, listen. <laughs> that's, that's been the universal answer pretty much is like we're not going to we're not going to pay full screen actors guild scale to some american actor and fly him in for a for a not even supporting role so yeah anyway uh, you do it but they don't because they want to save save some money you know? yeah and, yeah yeah uh, whatever so. well if you ever need white actors call us up man uh, oh, sure. uh, uh it'll be cheaper for and shoot you guys <laughs> I was going to say, when when did you know uh, what inspired you to be both a writer and a director? I would assume writing came first, but I'd love to know what made you want to do both of them. Uh, I started, of course, my career thinking that I'd become a script writer and I'd lose scripts only. But I realized, you know, uh, in my Bollywood stint, if you were to call it, you know, it was five years I struggled in Bombay. And, you know, nobody takes writers seriously, you know, it's, so it's better to, you know, just become a writer director it's not like i was not trained in filmmaking i did a, i did an MA a program in filmmaking in, in in the university of reading in uk and it was not of course not a course a vocational course like it was in uh, some other film school but you know uh, i had a i had an aesthetic uh, you know understanding of cinema so i knew i could direct if i had to you know? uh, so so that's how it began basically i just uh, started you know uh, just instead of just writing just becoming a writer and director and uh, suddenly you, you start moving faster in your career. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, I also want to say you have a great voice. This is the first time I'm ever hearing your voice. Uh, your voice is similar to that of Christopher Lee. I don't know if you've ever heard that. That's that well, yeah. baritone. Well, but... yeah, it's great. Yeah. Thank uh, you. <laughs> uh, but uh, I wanted to ask um, what directors either india or hollywood or wherever in the world uh inspired you most uh to be a filmmaker uh 
I don't know, you know, because I don't have this. This question is asked to me a lot these days, but I don't really have a ready answer because, uh, you know, I like uh, you know films by a wide range of people, yeah. not because they are those people who made it, but because of what they made. You know? So mm-hmm. I, I react mostly to the art that rather than the artist, you know. So I like films by Cronenberg, you know. I like uh, I like some of Ray's films, but not all of them. So you know, so it's like that. You know, I see I see a piece of art and I get influenced, or I get you know I file it away, you know, as an influence. Mm-hmm. But uh, mostly it has been genre filmmakers like John Carpenter, you know, early early mm-hmm. Ridley Scott, you know, uh, people like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I understand you were a big fan and probably still are of both Edgar Allan Poe and Stephen King. Is that right? Of yeah. course, yes. Of King course, is my guru. yeah. My guru. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, what are some of your favorite, like your favorite, favorite? Uh, I've read a lot of St- Stephen King novels. So, what are some of your favorite Stephen King works? Well, uh, uh, I when I was sixteen, I read it for the first time, and uh-huh. uh, I've read books several times over the years as I grew older. And each time, I find something new in that big fat novel. But uh, for a long time, uh, my favorite Stephen King book was Misery. Uh, mm. You know. Of this whole, uh, you know, it was such a dramatic. You know, every every time he comes up with a plot, it is so interesting, and you can't put down the book. You know, that is I'm what sure. I love about he writes. Uh, he, I uh, know. So I'm a big fan of uh, Misery. Uh, most of his books, you know, even Cujo, you know, I think Cujo is mm-hmm. great. Uh, you know, but uh, and Shining, of course. How can I forget Shining? You know, it's it just. Uh, I think it's the only uh, book that I was. I, I it's, that scared me. You know? I couldn't carry on reading. I'm and with the, you. That for for me, it's the, for for me, it's The Shining. I was, you know, I had seen the the Kubrick film first, and then I read the book after, and I was I was blown away at how good the book was. Yeah, it's such an interesting study of uh, a man descending into madness. You know, and yes. I find of madness very interesting. You know, so, so I love that book, and I think the the film didn't even touch ten percent of the potential of the book. You know, I agree. The uh, before you said you like creature films. Is that what you said? Uh, uh, creature are, features. Are you a fan of Guillermo? Of who? Guillermo del Toro. Of oh, course, of course. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, I I've seen Pan's Labyrinth and I've seen Shape of Water. So yeah, uh, yeah, I like I like Pan's Labyrinth a lot. You know, this, yeah. it's, that yeah. film is not great so much, movie. Uh, it's such a uh, you know a, a important document of its times. You know, and I've seen very little of uh, cinema coming out of that era of France when, when fascist France, uh, Spain. You know, so yeah. so I. I I love Pan's Labyrinth a lot. Yeah, yeah, such a such a great great film. Um, favorite directors of yours uh, out of America? I know you named some in India, but who are your favorite ones that you've? I know you said you don't have a specific one, but like in terms of just American general, who are some that you like a lot? Um, I would have to say you know the the the, the directors' work I always look forward to uh, is John Carpenter. Uh, okay. You know I. Uh, since I was very young, I was I was watching you know his film, uh, you know uh, his films, and uh, I I really don't know you know uh, I really cannot name uh, filmmakers right now you know from uh, any culture. I was a I was a huge fan of uh, Hideo Nakata who made The Ring you know The okay. Ring mm-hmm. in Japanese. Yeah. So uh, Takashi Miike's work also really liked out of Japan, you know. Uh, so yeah, I mean there's no really, really one filmmaker you know I, that I can say is my favorite or. Yeah. So, what projects do you have coming that you're excited about, or you may want us to know about? Did you say you're coming to Bo- a Bollywood? Yeah, there's something. Of course, I kind of. It's too early for me to talk about the project yet, but you sure. know, it's a, it's a, it's definitely you know, it's it's a film I wrote uh, in my struggling days uh, in Bombay, and I finally uh, made a state on it last year. Uh, so hopefully that film will take off next year, and uh, that and that is consuming most of my time. I also function as a as a you know uh, as a script writer, so I'm getting a lot of uh, web series work, you know, screenplay work to do. Uh, so I'm planning another uh, Asami's film. I'm trying to you know do an adaptation of uh, not an adaptation, but a story inspired by the Metamorphosis. So it's okay, it's huh? a very challenging. So uh, uh, let's hope it. That's awesome. Well, we're looking forward to anything you put out, man. That's gonna. That's going to be awesome to have you, uh, you. more and more exposure. And a lot of people have asked, um, I don't know if you know this, uh, where they can watch the film. Do you know the best place that they can watch it? One, because we don't want people to watch it via pirate 
uh, pirated no. content. We want to make sure the, the creators get the their due. And so do you know where specifically people can watch it? Uh, currently, it's just moviestains.com in India. Yeah. Uh, we are, you know, I, I, I don't know why, but we're trying. We're trying to put it out on, on, on bigger platforms, especially internationally. You know, we have a sales agent who's working towards that. Uh, but some, uh, right now, it's just movie scenes, and I'm, uh, you know, and I know it's not possible for everybody to watch it on movie scenes because it's not a really well-known OTT. But uh, if you just uh, visit the website and uh, there, the website, you'll find a lot of interesting content from India. Yeah. A lot of interesting filming, like you know, Salam Sasudaran from Kerala. Uh, you know, uh, his films are on on that platform. A lot of films from Northeast are on that platform. So uh, it's you know. It's not, you know, people who support independent cinema, it's not just about supporting the films or the filmmakers, but also the platforms which are exclusively devoted to showing independent cinema. And Movie Saints is one yeah. of them. It's a premiering website, so I would I would urge everyone to watch. Yeah, that's where that's that's where I, I heard that, that's where I heard it was uh, that it was stationed. That's where I've been telling people to go. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't another place uh, that, that people could see it. But uh I want to thank you for so much for your time. It was a pleasure talking to you, man. Uh, you're you're supremely talented, and we can't wait to see what's uh, what's coming next from you, Rick. I don't. Know. Lovely talking yeah. to you guys. Yeah, yeah lovely can... talking with you. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm really thankful we were introduced to you because of our subscribers, who we affectionately refer to as the stupid family and our stupid babies. Um, but. <laughs> Uh, it, it has been a joy to we Corbin and I were completely ignorant to all of the artistry coming out of India a year and a half ago. And because of the journey we've been able to take, we've not only been introduced to the expansiveness of the beauty of the artistry, but some of our favorite things we've encountered are what we refer and you did to as the independent films that are coming out of the regional areas of India. And we want so much for people to celebrate the kind of film that you make. So we are anxiously looking forward to anything that you're doing and please feel free to contact us. Let us know when you have something coming so we can promote it for you. Yeah. Definitely. definitely. I'll definitely do that. Thank you so okay. much, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your time. You have a great night, okay? Bye. Bye. Bye.